Welcome to The View with Vertex. This next episode is brought to you by Scafchamp, powered by Leo, along with their great partners, Kiwazo. Kiwazo are doing great things to address labor shortages and the risks of manual handling in the construction industry. I truly hope you enjoy this episode. If you do, all I ask is that you like, subscribe, and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Thank you and enjoy the episode. We are live from Vilnius, Lithuania. I'm joined by two very, very special guests from one of the main sponsors of the event, the, uh, the guys from Kiwazo, uh, Jonas and Simon Espinosa. Um, guys, welcome to The View with Vertex. Simon again. Uh, Jonas, the first time. How are you finding your time here in Lithuania so far? Oh, it's amazing. We arrived like two days ago, mm -hmm. uh, already had good nights here in Vilnius, a super nice city. Uh, meeting a lot of friends, right? We've been doing this for three years. Yeah. Now. So, uh, yeah. This is like home from home for you guys now. I told them when we <laughs> went through the, when we went on the plane, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, it feels like going on vacation or on a family, on a mm -hmm. family meeting. So yeah, 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 good to be back. Yeah. I always thought the UK scaffolding market is very small because everyone knows each other, yeah. but you come to Vilnius and then it's people from all around the world coming yeah. and then everyone still knows each other. You know? I, I call it LinkedIn live. It's like being like in LinkedIn. It's like, oh, I know him. I've seen his face before. And then like you, you end up bumping into each other and meeting. But yeah, so many people from last year. You finally get a, you know, a face, like a real face yeah, for yeah, all these accounts yeah. that you have been you know, yeah, chatting with. So many people. I mean, even one of the referees this year is a guy from back home, Alan Osborne. And I speak to him a lot, you know, on the phone. Uh, we've done a couple of little podcast things on LinkedIn together and stuff. But first time we've actually met in person was, was here. Same with, uh, you know, Jimmy P, Jimmy Palmer. Yeah, yeah. Big dog scaffolding. Um, Again, I'd knew him for years before Scaf Champ, but then you get to finally meet in person, and we've been speaking ever since last year's event. Last year. <laughs> um, we've been speaking ever since. So you, you do you meet people and um, build relationships. I think that's that's one of the most important things about the event. I think that's the the main important mm. thing, right? And I mean, and, the competition and, itself is kind of the reason for the gathering, right? Yeah. But everything else around yeah. is. Like what makes it special? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, and even during the competition, everyone's just like looking at what I want someone else is doing because that they can do it better or not, and they can learn from it. And at the end, everyone's talking about it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the competition is a small part, but this networking and interacting with other people is is huge. So I'm gonna go to the main sponsor, Coca Cola. No, <laughs> Kiwazo. What brought Kiwazo? What what was so? Uh, interested about Scaf Champ for you guys that you wanted to be a part of it right from the beginning. I think it was a couple of combinations of things, but like the like one main thing was that it was a different approach, right? Like if you if you look at traditional exhibitions, it's always made for management. It's like always very stiff, uh, and now you come to this kind of new approach here, uh, making it like very close to the users, like to the scaffolders, make it like for the guys who are really like out there in the field every day. Um, and it was made a bit differently, right? And if you look at our product and our kind of vision about how we uh, look at the industry, it's also a bit different than traditional things, right? So we kind of saw this as an immediate perfect match. And then obviously it was kind of, you know, we grew together. Um, like three years ago, we had like, what, five comp uh, uh, comp uh, competitors here. Yeah, it's like 20 this year, right? 20? 20, 21. So, and like three years ago, this was like, we were also in a much earlier stage. So it's kind of Scuff Jam grew, Kivazo grew. So we're going step by step together. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, long may it continue, I think. It's, uh, it seems to have been a, a great relationship so far. Um, yeah, definitely. And I mean, Scuff Jam is also growing, uh, doing smaller scaf champs in different regions and we're also looking to see okay if there's gonna be something big as well like this in north america how we can support there and also grow with uh, this idea because as some people have been telling us this is like the the modern way of looking at scaffolding the way to bring uh, like new generations into scaffolding is automatization that Kewas is doing but also these activities to show people hey scaffolding is something like fun something to be proud of yeah. Right? And that's how we found these. And again, it's just, that's exactly what this event's all about. It's about, you know, making scaffolding exciting, making it interesting. You you mentioned something there, Jonas, about um, about how it's less stiff and less uh, rigid than, you know, these other corporate, more more corporate sort of uh, networking events. There's, there's a fun element to it. We've got a competition. But the, the, that networking element of it is still there. And I think with you guys, the, the product is really focused 
oh, obviously on the company and the benefits that it can provide to the company, but it's the user as well, right? It's like the person who's using the lift bot. And whereas with, you know, a, a Bauma or a Construction Live or one of these other, you know, exhibitions, you've got the decision makers, you know, the people who are going to get benefit as a business, but you've also got the guys here as well. And I think that's going to be uh, really important as, as the event grows. Because if you've got a product, you want to convince the management that's right. But if you buy that product and then roll it out to your guys and they don't like it, you know, you've, you've got a challenge there. Whereas with, with this, it's, a, it's an opportunity to showcase to both the, the company and to the, no, 100%, the user. Right? If, if, you, if you don't get the users on board, uh, you know, you can be a sale, great sales guy mm. and you convince the management that, you know, they should get a couple of live bots on, like in their stock. But if the if you don't have the buy-in from the users, then it's going to be you know yeah. sitting in the yard for uh, you know the rest of the life and yeah. it doesn't matter, right? And uh, so that's one of the reasons, for example, also why we're doing um, all these pilot projects all the time, right? It's because creating nice presentations, nice flyers, whatever, this can be done easily in the 21st century. But only if we kind of spend time with the clients and also get the, the users on board it, how they can feel it, how they can test it, uh, and how they see that it actually saves their energy. That's kind of one of our main focuses, also from the product perspective. Uh, only if we get the buy-in from, from the users, then uh, there's going to be a success story. I've noticed that with you guys. Uh, like, whereas, I mean, you know, Simon knows the numbers uh, and we've, you know, we've sat down together with, you know, customers and, and, and spoke about LiftBot and, you, you can show someone the data on uh, a tablet or a laptop and you can show people the numbers and like how it can save them time, it can save them money and it can, you've, you can analyse data about you know, how that project's going. But actually getting out there with the guys and you know, allowing them to use the kit and doing these demonstrations, I think that's, that seems to be what's setting you guys apart. Totally. I mean, we, we're talking about flexibility, for example, from our product perspective, right? Uh, we said that you can get the, the gear installed in like 20 minutes. But uh, you only get the, like you can only convince the guys if they really tested it themselves and if they really see that it's like you know easy to install, quick to install. Uh, this is when you know you, you get moving, right? Otherwise, it's just also just a you know a phrase or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a spreadsheet, some exactly. numbers. And the thing is that what we say we can do is is hard to believe because there's nothing to compare it to. So when we say you can move it around from one place to another uh, very easily, you just think, okay, I can do that with a rope. Right, uh, but then we say you can uh, do one click and it goes by itself, and you don't have to be pulling it. And then they think like, okay, this I could do with these massive like elevators or goods hoist. Uh, but we're like, okay, imagine now a combination of the two, and it's it's no, I, I don't think I can install it myself like a rope, but use it as a goods hoist, right? So what that's why we go into doing these pilot projects to show them, hey, look, you can take it out your own scaffolders. You don't need any third parties uh, that are specialized. Your own scaffolders are trained to do it. They do it very easily, move it from one place to another, keep working like that. So it's, it's really important for them to see it uh, and then the users to also be happy and feel comfortable with it. Yeah, yeah. So what's, what's like the main, uh, the biggest market for you guys at the moment? Would you say uh, US or? So we opened the US market last year and it's grown much faster than uh, what we've been growing in the rest of the world because the market there is so big. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're still uh, doing a lot of uh, industrial uh, clients in Europe and some commercial clients in, in Europe and the UK actually as well. So we have uh, quite some presses in the UK. That will probably grow as well. Um, you, you know, it's, it's always like, there's initially this skepticism and then those, those skeptics start becoming believers and then someone buys in and then someone sees the buy-in and goes, oh, what, what are they using? And, you know, I think, same with this stuff, you know, with Leia, um, with, uh, you know, the Twix beam, we can probably say this now because this will go out after the event, that like they're going to use the Twix beam in, um, in this year's event. But there was a big race in the UK, like, and no one will really say that there was, but there definitely was. Everyone wanted to be the first to use the Twix beam on a project. And I think it's the same with um, with LiftBot. We had Everyone a, wants to like get in there. We had exactly the same situation, basically. We had like two clients, two industrial service providers <coughs> uh, who were working at the Exxon uh, yeah. refinery in Foley. Don't give it them first. <laughs> they, the second one who signed, he said he's going, only going to sign if we're going to deliver it on the same day uh, <laughs> as their competitor. So basically what happened is we had two trucks going on the same refinery and then just delivering. <laughs> and I was afraid that the guys are, you know, measuring the time who got it like 
yeah, an yeah. hour earlier or something, but it had to be the same day yeah. to be delivered We're on like the same children, day. We're like children, aren't we? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, you never, never lose you. Everyone wants to be the first person to, to get the new toy. I mean, in the end, for, for them, it really made a lot of sense, right? They wanted also to bring new technology to their client. Uh, so Exxon was also interested in the technology and they didn't want to give any uh, you know, space to the competition. Yeah, right? yeah. So the, the, their end client, and that's what we actually see quite a lot, is that like, in industrial fields, also the asset owners, uh, like all these Exxons and BSFs and, mm -hmm. and Shells, they see the value. And then uh, obviously it's in the interest of the industrial service provider to position yeah, themselves. Yeah, different, different markets, I guess, uh, and different industries probably want the product for different reasons i guess i mean you talked about the uh, the us being a you know quite a strong market for you i believe that the, the big challenge there is the labor cost right yeah so they have a labor cost and also the expertise uh, of the scaffolders there is they don't have the same training as they have here so that's why they are also looking for okay we have only a certain amount of good men how can we maximize uh, our output from these men Right. So that's where they're saying, OK, let's not waste them uh, in a chain line. Let's not waste them pulling ropes. Let's use liftbot and uh, use this man actually to do the erection. Yeah. yeah. So getting the most bang for your buck. Correct. I've, I've, you know, we talked about that last time, didn't we? If you've got really high paid, skilled yeah. operatives standing there just uh, pulling materials all day, it's not the best use of the time, is it? Yeah, but it's not the best use of the time, but it's also... Uh, not what excites them, right? So you don't keep them happy because nobody, no matter what kind of salary you get, if you're just chain lining all day, you can do this for a couple of weeks, yeah. months, but it's it, like not what, what keeps you happy and makes you... The chain line turns you into a weirdo. Like it does because your mind like goes elsewhere. Mm. And like before you know it, you're just making silly noises and just try to keep each other entertained <laughs> because yeah. like a, a full day chain lining materials is um, it's not for the faint hearted. Yeah. It's, you know, it's hard, it's challenging work and yeah, you've kind of just got to mentally accepts that I'm stood in this one spot all day <laughs> doing the same repetitive action. It's, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to do. I no, think that's why a lot of scaffolders end up getting in, uh, in trouble for wolf whistling. Uh, ladies passing by, I think they're just bored because <laughs> they're stood doing this all day. Like, yeah. You're right, they want to be fixing. No, and something else that I think we, we've seen is uh, when you have like companies that say, yeah, but I, I can chain line, I can do it very quick because also I have a lot of like not scaffolders, but like trainees that yeah. they are going to be in the chain. But at the end of the day, companies don't really have that many uh, trainees. And what say. are you training like, them? The word yeah, training. And, and what are you training, right? Train so, us, training. Yeah. <laughs> no, at, at the end of the day, what they have is mostly scaffolders mm. and they have a couple uh, less paid people that would are planned for the chain. But at the end, they just have expensive people doing chain line because that's that's all they have mm -hmm. right so so it's it's been hard to, to make them realize because no one wants to accept that they have a uh, very expert people doing just passing material right um, but slowly they've they've noticed it i mean these guys will be able to tell you first and um layer you know i mean especially in the uk as well like there was there was always like a big resistance towards modular scaffolding and like for people in europe like and in the states and elsewhere in the world uh they they listen to that and they think, what? Uh, it's, it's insane, but there was a real resistance to um, modular scaffolding. And it took a while for people to actually accept that it was going to be more cost effective. You know, they're like, oh, that costs so much money and I can get so many tubes and so many fittings for that same amount of money. It's like, yeah, but you're going to spend so much more time putting that stuff together. You know, as much as a lot of people wouldn't like to admit it, modular scaffolding is the future. It's the way forward. It's also Ro the global robots norm, the it's a global norm. If you look at the yeah. global scaffolding market, each market has kind of its like own solution. Yeah. They've been fitting in the German markets, maybe frame scaffolding, right? Yeah. But in every market, there's also system scaffolding, right? Yeah. That's kind of the that's the, the main reason also why it's going to be a future as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the, I think the same will be, you know, the same with robotics. Uh, it's it's going to be proven to be more cost effective. Um, quicker, less labor intensive, less risky. There's um, a lot of advantages uh, to it. And if we're having this, this skill shortage, it's like, why would you not um, try and um, deal, deal with that by using equipment? I'm pointing down at it as well, a, li yeah. a little uh, mini lift bot. <laughs> when did you get this made? We, we made it just, I don't know, a couple weeks back. Uh, we were just trying to see 
uh, like when we are doing all this uh, research and development, we have some 3D printers, we printed uh, some stuff out, and some guy just wanted a lift pad for his table, so he printed it out. <laughs> and oh, that's, so that's a 3D printer? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. You know, Does it go up and down? <laughs> you have to like manually. <laughs> yeah, but, um, and when I saw it in his table, I was like, I'm taking that to build. Yeah, 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 yeah. But bring it back. Yeah, yeah. I cannot promise. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe someone is going to take. Well, it we off. do have a charity auction, um, and if somebody wants to, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure these people are paying good money for that. You might get in a bit of trouble if you don't give your friend his uh, his tiny lift pot back. <laughs> he can produce another one. I, I <laughs> it's a 3D so. printer. Right? He, can, he can make he can make ten more. So if you want to get get your hands on that and <laughs> charity <laughs> auction, we also. 3D printed a little trophy for this year, actually. Ah, so is that the trophy along yeah. with the belt? Yes. Nice, nice. Also 3D printed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, this is the future, isn't it? 3D yeah. printing, lift bots. We'll all be out of a job soon, but we'll, be, we'll own nothing and be happy. <laughs> I think fixing is not something that uh, robotics can do. So we'll take, care, we'll take care of transporting the material from one place to another and then have... Yeah the experts on it that are the scaffolders. Everybody's terrified of like, technology's gonna do this, this and this. AI's, you know, chat GPT is gonna get rid of everybody's jobs. Um, I was only speaking to uh, Simon Boys, you know, from Scaffold yeah. before about, you know, the, one of the criticisms about like software, like Scaffold is like, oh, you won't need design engineers anymore. Like it probably will create more work for design engineers, that software, um, you know, but we have to move with the times. Yeah, and you have to be able to do it quicker. Yeah. I mean, also we have more skilled people, um, you know, rather than rather than less. And the market is so big that you just have to be able to have your couple of engineers being able to do more projects and not waste time doing every single drawing, uh, but automate it. The same with uh, LiftPot, you know. Uh, you don't have to have so many guys in the chain just passing the material, but you have to be able to have your expert guys and someone else that is an expert in the area, like, moving the material up and down. That, and that's, I think that's the future in every single market. Yeah, wow. And uh, the interesting part is actually that we have been, you know, we started three years back in Germany, then went to Europe, now opened up uh, the North American market. And it doesn't matter with what company you're talking. The only thing that they all have in common is like looking for skilled labor and, you know, making the, uh, using the, the skilled labor in the most effective way. That's kind of common, like yeah. common problem. And that's the only common uh, solution is going to be uh, using technology and the, uh, um, either on a software level, on a hardware level, to kind of use the, the skilled labor that we have uh, to kind of get the, the most out of it. Well, I think is game-changing uh, technology. I think all that's left to do is to, to go out and enjoy the event. Lastly, before you go, have you got a team that you think might win this year? Mm. I mean, I, I've seen the Lithuanian teams have been very hard, uh, very strong, sorry, the, the last years. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, now you have three UK teams, one Irish team, uh, so I don't know. It's. I hope in my heart, I hope that one of the English teams can do it. I've just had a, a chat with uh, RNDV. They look pretty strong. Yeah. They They've strong. been putting some some hard yards and they're putting some practice in. So <laughs> yeah. let's see. I mean, they, they historically they've always been two Lithuanian teams. Now they have three. So mm. I think they also have like the odds are on yeah. their side. Yeah, home advantage. Yeah, a little but bit. if not, we obviously UK team. Team Rose. <laughs> Your team Rose? Yeah, yeah, I've got to be. They're, they're all called it down the road from me, Rose. Um, we met with them. Yeah, yeah I, I, we were yesterday um, in a net networking event yeah. in, in Vilnius with the Rose team. Yeah, yeah. But again, thank you very much for, for, uh, for joining and participating. Um, hope to catch up with you again uh, as the event progresses and to see you again next year for SCAF Champ 2025. Let's do it. Brilliant.